Tilray, adding its budding booze business. Tilray just purchased Breckenridge Distillery in an all-stock deal worth $102.9 million. Tilray's plan for Breckenridge, famed for its bourbon made with, it says, snow melt from the Colorado Rockies, is to launch, you guys ready? A cannabis-infused whiskey once the U.S. has fully legalized marijuana. As Tilray morphs into a broader cannabis lifestyle brand, what will it mean for the company and its stock? Here in a Fox Business exclusive, Tilray Chairman and CEO Erwin Simon. And now you're beefing up this budding booze business. I, I'm dying to know how you envision, Erwin, what you do with these two things. Is this like, oh, your peanut butter went in my chocolate, like Reese's peanut butter? Your weed went in my whiskey. <laughs> so, uh, good afternoon, Liz, and great to see everybody. Um, listen, Breckenridge Distillery is a great brand. It's a great bourbon that was created uh, by two physicians and have grown into a, you know, a great size. Pretty exciting. Um, so, you know, Tilray being a diversified company, we have a good-sized cannabis business in Canada, in adult use in medical. We have a, a medical business in the U.S. Uh, and in Europe, sorry. And with that, we have consumer brands in the U.S. And Breckenridge, which is a bourbon brand today, which is well-known in Colorado, it's sold in 50 states. And our plan is to continuously grow the Breckenridge business to over 100 plus million dollars. But at the time of legalization, consumers will know the brand. And instead of alcohol, it will be infused with cannabis or THC. So you'll have bourbon that's infused with THC. Uh, not alcohol. And that's some of the exciting things that will come out of Tilray over the next few years. Okay, so we've got a, a bottle of this bourbon whiskey right now. And here it is. And it's got the snow melt right on the uh, right. It says Colorado snow melt. Is that true? Or when they really make it with the snow melt from the Colorado Rockies? They really do. And, you know, most bourbons are made in Kentucky, but this comes out of Colorado and mm -hmm. um, it is made with the, you know, water that comes from the Colorado snow out there. Um, and great tasting product. I go out there and tell everybody you should try this product. Well, people love these craft spirits. That has become definitely a thing. But when you talk about infusing it with I don't, THC, CBD, weed, or, or you know the marijuana d derivative, t tell me about the, the legality of that. Don't you have to wait till the entire nation has legalized marijuana? Or how would you be able to manufacture and, of course, market something like that? So, so let me be clear. Number one, you're 100% right. Um, we as a NASDAQ traded company, we do not sell any cannabis in the U.S. at all. Right. Um, we, and in regards to a bourbon, you cannot combine alcohol and cannabis or THC together. So this would be a product that's infused with THC but mm -hmm. without alcohol. So it's actually two separate businesses. It right. would be the current you know, Breckenridge brand today with alcohol. And it would be a bourbon type of product that would be infused with THC at the time upon legalization. But I think the big thing is, Liz, here is a category today in the bourbon category. It's one of the fastest growing category in the spirits business, along with tequila. Here is a business that, and you know, I love brands that can grow in you know 50 states. I love brands that you can do things. And you step back today. Millennials love bourbon, and that is the big thing. <laughs> so if it's a bourbon product, mm -hmm. at the time of legalization, there's no reason you cannot do a Breckenridge THC type of bourbon, or you know, Breckenridge also has a vodka today, also has a gin. So this will be a brand that will be able you know, to be an adjacency to the cannabis business upon legalization. Very profitable brand, very profitable category. And actually what it does, it, you know, diversifies our portfolio for shareholders. Well, I, that's the point. I mean, you are uh, the king of doing stuff like that. In fact, you ran, you founded Hain Celestial. You bought Hain and then you bolted on Celestial Teas. And from there, you added Terra Chips and Arrowhead Mills and all of these very, very big health food companies. And you, you owned all of the shelving at, at Whole Foods. I mean, it was unbelievable. So you go from health food to weed. That's got to be quite the transition. That said, Erwin, when, when you talk about becoming this lifestyle brand, when do you foresee it beginning to really take hold in the stock? Because the stock has indeed struggled. It is year over year up about 12%, but it's flat on the year so far. 
Listen, I come back and I say this here. I put out there in the end of July a $4 billion vision by the end of 2024. And how to build this into a $4 billion consumer products company focusing on the cannabis industry, the mm -hmm. cannabis being adult use, the cannabis being medical and other consumer brands. You know, I think what's happened with a lot of the cannabis stocks along with tech stocks today is this here. Consumers ultimately thought cannabis would legalize in the U.S. this year. It didn't happen. And with that, have moved on to other stocks. But in the meantime, you know, we're one of the largest producers of cannabis in the world today. We're a company that's focused on medical cannabis, which I think there's some major, major, you know, opportunities and advantages for. You know, right now, Europe, Germany is about to legalize cannabis for an adult use, which in Germany alone, it's a $3 billion, you know, business for us. Malta legalized today for personal use, which is a small country. But again, you're going to see, you know, the avalanche of legalization for cannabis happening. Mm -hmm. And with Tilray, with its grow abilities, with its brands, with its quality controls, its regulatory out there, you know, we will be one of the biggest in the cannabis industry. And along with that, with adjacencies, I love the spirits business and the beer business with our Sweetwater sure. 420. Right. Um, it will that, be yeah. some great brands. We yeah, with some great brands there. Well, it's, it's fascinating to me that Malta is the first European country that will formally legalize marijuana. Uh, you know, I think in 2011, they just finally legalized divorce. Uh, good on you, Malta. <laughs> but how are you setting up business in Europe then? So today in Europe, there's over 20 countries that have, you know, cannabis that's legalized from a medical. We have a major facility in Portugal and a major facility in Germany. Mm -hmm. Also, we have in Germany today is a distribution company that distributes medicines to 13,000 drugstores. So the infrastructure, the grow facilities, the brands are set up in Europe. Okay. And upon legalization of adult use, we're ready to go. But the big thing today is, Liz, there's a big medical business out there. You have the docs that are prescribing this for epilepsy, for pain, for anxiety, for sleep. So with that, we are set up and, you know, I'm looking to grow our European business to a billion dollars, our Canadian business to a billion dollars. In the meantime, in the U.S., because okay. of legalization, grow our consumer brands here. Great to see you, Irwin. Um... Thank you. We'll be interested in seeing that uh, non-alcoholic bourbon infused with THC. <laughs> we'll have you back in, on. <laughs> in the meantime, enjoy our current bourbon product, which is an excellent product. And to your point, it comes from Colorado. Um, that's made with a lot of the great snow that comes from Colorado. And it's a great tasty product. So. Erwin, um, you don't know the wolves here in our control room who have already uh, tried to abscond with this bottle. So... This thing will be gone before the blink of an eye. Thank you very much. Irwin Simon, you too, CEO of Tilray.